Hello and welcome to Model Kit Beginner all the way from Cape Town. I hope you guys are doing all right. We have a lovely cool day today, probably around about 20 degrees, uh, cool wind, even a little bit of a drizzle. Lovely, lovely weather as you want to have it in Cape Town. Right, today we're having a look at uh, something interesting. Uh, there it is. Quick, uh, quick out the history. Um, well, not of the kit, but how I got it got it this morning actually there was another kit review supposed to go up today some uh, more run-of-the-mill model but uh, this morning there was a hobby kind of fair you know where people sell their stuff uh, very very few car kits uh, Cape Town is not a great place if you want to do uh, car modeling there are very very few car modelers around I'm afraid and uh, so uh, all you have to deal with is um, military guys and there were military guys there and uh, especially one corner of the hall was if you're not military and 172 you know they don't even greet you so that's awesome yeah, but uh, there were a few and and what i found was a uh, the beautiful uh, corvette grand sport which you can see i think it's a 67 if i'm not oh, 64 here we go so it's the same year i was born that's fantastic all right so it's a 64 corvette ground sport which means it's just one year after the split window so this one shouldn't have one and it doesn't okay and we're certainly gonna have a look at it it's uh accurate miniatures they're always interesting kits uh you you never get disappointed from a entertaining point of view so this is a uh, not kind of a standard kit i think and i uh, I'm looking forward to unpacking this with you so we can have a look. So let's move down to the bench. But before we do it, a uh, quick move over to Scalemates because uh, we want to see if there is any history behind this. And here we go on Scalemates with the accurate miniatures Corvette Grand sport sebring 1964 is the scheme and uh, looks awesome nice box art accurate miniatures it's a 5000 kit it's in 124 and apparently from 1995 now uh, there you see the box content actually there's something missing which i will have to add because there's also a p sheet in here which I don't see anyway then uh, so this is the history apparently this was the first one I've seen possibly build this one before not very successfully right at the beginning when I started I think it was I was probably a bit overwhelmed by this one and uh, if you look at the extended timeline apparently it all started in 1963 really the 64 Corvette started in 19... Okay, 64 wasn't that different apart from the split window, which was obviously a big separator. But yeah, looking at the 1963 Palmer Plastics kit, or when we go a little bit further, uh, you know, a Crown or even an AMT or... Here we have a monogram coming out in 1985. Same kit, you think? I don't know. I, have, I was kind of thinking this is an own, and it looks like it is an own, own thing. Oh, right. Also, okay. So I think uh, Accurate Miniatures uh, made that covet from scratch. We uh, start in 1985. This is when our came out. Uh, 95, sorry. 95. This is when our came out. Then we had this, this one, this one, this one. And last but not least, this one. So let's have a look at all of them. Here we go. That's very pretty. It's also a grand sport in a different uh, livery. That is. The prototype in Sebring 1964, then we have a 1963 Corvette Grand Sport. Hmm. These are all uh, iterations of the kit we have a look at. Uh, here's a 1963 
uh, Corvette Grand Sport in the livery of the 1965 Sebring 12 hours. And then last but not least, 2012, if I remember correctly, this one came out as a Ruel Grand Sport from Accurate Miniatures. Have a Ruel board over the molds? Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, you'll be the judge of that. Um, uh, looking at the box, and I had a quick peep before. I don't think it's... Uh, it's AMT from the 60s or even from the 80s. But uh, let's have a look together. Uh, let's get onto the bench and see what's in that box. And here we are down on the bench with uh, the box of the Corvette Grand Sport 1964 Sebring very nice let's have a quick look what we are having here it uh, tells you the kit features right over here what's in there the uh, materials required and this in english and french plastic parts made in korea decals made in mexico designed and packaged in the usa and then you have a little bit about the covet in uh, five different languages which is fantastic we have it in English, French, German, Italian, and Spanish. And let's have a look at the back. Here you go. Let's put it this way. There you go. There you see the chassis. And uh, then the body right over here. Gives you an idea what it could look like once you are done with it. But let's open this thing. Here we are. Let's put it to one side. Absorption sheet, let's leave that with us. We have a body, plastic parts, plastic parts. Oh, that wasn't very exciting, wasn't it? Aha! But you must look closer, Padawan, because this has a double bottom. Here we go, look at that. Isn't that great? We have glass and glass. Could we luck out and get two glass? Uh, we have chrome, kind of. Tires. We have those PE parts, which didn't feature in on scale mates, you remember. And uh, we have decals right over here. And that's about it. And let's put our false bottom in again. That's cool. I like that. <laughs> right. And then we go to the instruction sheet. Let's see, do I have something online for this? Nah, right, because this is quite a biggie, this instruction sheet. Uh, yeah. Corvette Grand Sport. Painting instructions are interesting. So for every step you do, and we get to the steps in a minute, you get the painting instructions on the first page. So you have to page back and, and uh, look at the painting instructions. You also get the results for the uh, endurance race in Sebring in 1964. Uh, Ferraris, uh, the Cobra Fords did it all. And uh, first Corvette we had was uh, 16th position. Yeah. And uh, so they didn't do particularly well, but I'm sure they had the best looking car. Here we go. There it gives you a little bit of the decal placement. Here it gives you the PE parts right over here. And here's a model paint reference chart. There's a uh, model master, model master, acrylic, humble, gunzi, Tamiya, pulley S, testers, and realistic racing colors true match. Oh, Mr. Hobby, <laughs> oh, Mr. Color, none of that. Right, here we have the Corvette Grand Sport. And as you can see, very, very interesting. You have the different steps here. 
and uh, every step tells exactly what to do in a descriptive uh, meta way and then obviously if you want to see how to paint what you have to go back <laughs> to the first page so i'll probably scan that part the paint part and just put it on my computer screen so i don't need to always go forwards and backwards and you have these then going down into a couple of steps so we have engine we have the rear chassis right over here we have the front chassis right over here. We have the engine installation. We have the interior assembly, which you will see right over here. We have uh, the body, which is the inner fenders and uh, uh, smaller parts, fittings and uh, transparent parts. Here we have the uh, construction of the louvers, which go on to the hut or bonnet which you see over here right so the louvers are made of PE and you put them in there real uh, construction then putting everything together body interior and uh, chassis some extra details right over here gives you PE details and it also says you can uh, you can uh, put them on or not and uh, that's about it interesting uh, way of doing an instruction sheet i can see why this hasn't become commonplace it is a bit confusing and uh, doing uh, this one here oh what must how must i paint engine for oh 51 and 52 aluminium who is 51 and 52 uh, oh there oh these are the engine halves okay engine halves aluminium start a gloss black so yeah it, it, it uh, will ask it's a, it's a different way of organizing your build and let's have a look at the decals seem to be done uh, by accurate managers themselves and as we have seen on the box printed in mexico right and what are we having on here now we have all the white parts actually there's no cracks on there we have obviously the numbers a couple of sponsors dashboard that's about it that's about it that's all you need i guess how good they are i'll have to tell you some other time because uh, what i can tell you is that they are not cracked so that's always a good sign then we have tires right over here let's have a look at the tires uh, let's get you a bit closer here there you are all right tires are all on a sprue oh here we are let's have a look at the tread it's not bad not bad at all uh, not bad at all bit hollow so careful with the sandpapering and it is branded Let's see if we can see what the brand is is it continentals You've got to be kidding me no it's good years yeah all right good year branded tires so that's cool i like that a lot so you can actually try to you know bring them out a little bit very cool tires not bad at all they are hard so so you will uh, you will to need to assemble the wheel around it uh, i don't think you could possibly think of pushing them over your wheel o-ring afterwards so yeah there's that then we have clear parts and i i'm confused because i see two clear parts and if i look and read 5,900 5, clear parts clear parts they appear to be identical they are indeed so we have a front window side window rear lights uh, front window rear window side windows rear lights and headlight covers and then we even have a oh yeah that's very nice we have a dashboard cover as well and some position lights I don't know what that is go on the mirror 
these things here which I'm sure go somewhere and uh, that are your clear parts and uh, looks like we lucked out and have them primed too then let's have a look at the chrome it's a weird color see that not really chrome chrome it looks like chrome brass kind of mixture yeah so the chroming here is not very good not very good at all i don't have a problem that it is not shiny shiny that's fine um but yeah i don't like the brassiness coming out from underneath the chrome it looks uh, if it would have add to a worn look that would have been nice but it doesn't really so if we look at the steering wheel here quickly very nice actually so this will be all dechromed here are the wheels which are pretty we have the wipers right over here and uh, knockoffs right over here and other parts like valve covers so yeah these uh if you're anything like me you will dechrome the, all of them and uh, chrome them yourself as you need it for some of the steering wheel doesn't need any chrome does it right and oh yeah well, let's have a look at this we have the PE parts these are the PE parts which you use I don't need to open that these are the PE parts you use to uh, put the louvers on the hood together and then here are some other more detailed PE parts right over there pretty cool pretty cool then uh, let's get to the plastic it is all molded in this gray which i actually like it's one of my favorite uh, sprue colors if you want so and uh, let's have a look what it looks like right looks like the front assembly which uh, fits to the radiator let's have a quick look at the detail not too shabby night rear wheel spare wheel right over here assembly then we have this we have uh, a leaf spring right over there inner fenders which we have seen already and then we have the chassis very cool right over here actually looks very good don't see much flash see quite a few seams so it will need a cleanup but the plastic appears to be soft well it's just yeah yeah there's no problem you will uh, easily get this sanded and uh, get the seams out part of the deal isn't it then we have another one here right uh, more of these looks nearly like tanks I don't know the outlets uh, a frames we have a uh, brakes right over here there we go there these new fangled uh, disc brakes you see that and then uh, more exhausts right over here suspension parts right over here rear if I would have to guess there's the battery there you go and uh, belt assembly distributor other suspension parts right over here all in all very nice here's even some uh, hoses right over here very delicate need to be careful because they need some cleanup everything needs a bit of a cleanup there on the exhaust you even see a little bit of flesh so uh, yeah not super clean if you allow me to say so look clean enough to get an awesome build out of it but not super clean right now next uh, plastic screws ah this is well these are the interior panels engine parts more engine parts i think these are the uh, lights uh, inside the light covers and light buckets we would call them 
uh, we have uh, engine halves, uh, steering column and other engine parts right over here. We have the seats who are not majorly detailed and maybe there was no major detail on them. Another light bucket right over here, pedals and obviously the hood to which you then have to uh, glue and install and put together the PE parts. They even say in the instruction, please use white glue for the PE parts because you will, uh, in so many words, you will mess up when you use uh, CA glue. Right, oh, came off dashboard. It gives us a chance to have a really good look. Here you go. Seen some dashboard detail. Seen the, we have seen the uh, water slides for it. And that's it, so nothing, nothing extravagant. And uh, since it was a racing car, there probably wasn't anything extravagant in there. Right, then we have the interior, which has a bit of a structure at the bottom. I don't think they put carpet in there. Anyway, there it is. Nothing special about it. Has the uh, gas pedal right over here in it itself. And that's about it. And then last. But certainly not least, the one, the only, the iconic body of the Corvette 1964. Let's get it out. Right. You can see it has these huge stabilizer here, always like that, so there's no... no. So the A pillars are not particularly thin, but yeah, rather safe than sorry. So in transport, nothing gets destroyed. Let's have a look here. We get the filler cap detail right over here. You see that? We have some ancient detail right over here. Needs a bit of a sand. Here's some of the grill detail in front. On the side, oh sorry, had a rough morning. On the side we have uh, these vents which are open. So if you want to have a real assurance that it wasn't an old AMT kit or monogram kit, here you go. You can see right through, same at the back. I like that, I like that a lot. Then obviously the swollen arches are right over here. I'm sure they need to be added more or right over there. You have these uh, beautiful uh, access points for the handles here at the back you have a lid right over here and a little bit of a Corvette uh, 3d as well as the fastness a little bit of a grill a cooling looks like oil cooler something like that right over here and uh, then obviously the back now the body is very pretty. Body is really very pretty. I'm looking for where they have stitched it together and I'm telling you, I can't find it. Can't find it. I can tell you that this is all looks very sharp. So this could possibly be a second one. But yeah, body looks really good. <laughs> it really does. Very, very good. And uh, very pretty obviously too so I am I am rather colored impressed I really am so that's a very very nice body pretty very very pretty right and here we are this is uh, or was the uh, Corvette Grand Grand Sport 1964 in Sebring colors. Let's go back upstairs and see to what conclusion we come. Right, here we are back upstairs with the Corvette Grand Sport, which we just had a look at. Very, very cool kit. And I've seen them, they're not too expensive. I think I've seen it for $40, $45. If you're lucky, you can get it for that. Um, uh, I think worth every penny. It really looks a nice kit. 
uh, really looking forward to have a go at that one uh, that has just started raining it makes a bit of a, a racket on my roof so wonderful good timing so that is uh, me being very impressed with the Corvette Grand Sport from Accurate Miniatures I think it's a lovely lovely kit with typical Accurate Miniatures detail I mean I have that McLaren as well uh, M8 I think it's called and yeah same there but this one even seems a little bit cleaner if anything needs a little bit of you know tender loving care on the seams etc but otherwise a very very nice kit and if you come across it for a reasonable price you certainly should go for it well thanks very much for popping in hope you guys enjoyed this I certainly did and uh, you have a lovely time I will enjoy the rain around here and greetings from Cape Town. Cheers.